Hello, everyone. Um, wonderful to uh, have you today uh, with uh, me for the session on uh, networking abroad, how to build your global career. Uh, my name is uh, Lea. Um, I represent uh, Binus uh, University. I am in the role of uh, international communication, engagement, and uh, student recruitment uh, manager. Uh, I also teach for Binus uh, Business School. Uh, so part of my job uh, at Binus uh, is to build partnerships with schools, governments, other stakeholders, um, as well as to recruit international students, to teach international business and support international students in uh, their uh, integration within the Binusian uh, community. So I hope that uh, today's lecture is going to be um, uh, useful. These are our wonderful uh, students from all over uh, the world. So the first question that comes up, uh, why essentially is uh, networking and especially global networking important uh, today? Um, Bianca Cole of Forbes uh, Women um, essentially reminds us that uh, no one is an island. Uh, so it is very important that we uh, build long-term relationships uh, which will result in uh, mutual benefits uh, over time. Uh, so uh, some of the reasons why we need to network is to trade information, um, to uh, build trust, essentially, uh, knowing uh, relevant uh, people and uh, having uh, had a past relationship, partnership or collaboration with them uh, opens up uh, new opportunities and it helps you uh, essentially being noticed. You can probably think about um, uh, uh, an instance where you uh, had that, uh, um, selfie with a famous person, you put it on an Instagram and all of a sudden you had a lot of new followers. Well, this is an example of being noticed uh, through people, uh, through other people who have uh, more visibility than you. Um, you have access to newer opportunities. Uh, all the important jobs are first advertised within uh, networks, within institutions. Um, they're is also an opportunity for you to get access to resources such as funding from people who are in uh, more influential positions than yourself. Well, of course, it boosts self-confidence as well, right? To have uh, 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 friends from different walks of uh, life who can help you. And how does all this relate to uh, global networking and uh, global building a global career well um, networking helps you essentially uh, build global competitive advantage so what does this essentially uh, mean having knowing people from around the world helps you build your internationally mobile career career um, and international businesses of course want people who uh, know others who are in influential places in different parts of the world. Uh, so essentially, you have the opportunity to create value for international businesses if you have a global... Uh... So why students choose overseas uh, study? Uh, because um, according to uh, one of the QS uh, studies, um, students are looking for employment uh, prospects. Also very important, which is related to building an international career, they're looking for connections worldwide in 45% of the cases. Uh, quality of education, of course, important student experience, opportunities to travel, but building connections is, is among one of the most important uh, reasons. Um, and Oh, we had a group of researchers um, in Hungary uh, conducting an analysis of the different reasons why students study overseas. And they have essentially come up 
with uh, four different groupings of the main uh, reasons. Uh, one of these is, of course, cost. Um, there are opportunities uh, when you study overseas to actually save on costs. This is one of the reasons why very often students from US uh, study in Europe uh, because the quality of education is comparable while the tuition fee is much more affordable. This is one of the reasons why we receive students um, to BINUS. Uh, we offer double uh, degrees with prominent universities in Australia and UK. But uh, at Indonesian uh, fees. Geopolitical area uh, uh, so overseas for cultural uh, curiosity. They want to uh, challenge themselves, build their adaptability, self-reliance, critical thinking. Um, they uh, want uh, a, a place where they're going to feel comfortable. So study location is, is important. Um, some uh, are specifically trying to build their international career, so they're looking at things such as degree recognition, employment opportunities, um, intercultural uh, competence and global mindset uh, as it plays out at the campus and within their community. Some of them want the language study, so they're targeting uh, a particular again geopolitical area so the two uh, all, all of these are of course interrelated as well <clears throat> some students um, uh, have family ties or they got a recommendation from a friend or family and they want to build their global network which then comes back to geopolitical area and international career <clears throat> well However, 40% of international students have no close uh, local friends. Yeah? Uh, so according to the International Student Barometer, international students value relationships in the local community high, uh, but they have more friends from their own country while studying overseas and other countries than the host country. That's not necessarily an issue if you want a global network, this is what you want. You want friends uh, who have from your home country who have studied overseas. You want friends from um, uh, other countries. But of course, you need to know people who are in your host country uh, as well. So what are some of the reasons uh, why then it is so difficult to network uh, when you come to a, a, to a, new, to a new place? Uh, well, first of all, if you're traveling for the first time, um, uh, you were lacking cross-cultural competence. Uh, and of course, because of the different cultures, there are some frictions and some difficulties in adjusting to the new place. Um, to consider as well is that local students don't necessarily also have uh, cross-cultural competence. We also have a tendency to uh, be attracted to people who are similar to us. Uh, we have seen that students uh, study overseas for different reasons. Um, not all students have clear networking goals and approaches to help them build their uh, local network. Um, and sometimes the, the institutional uh, structures at their host universities are not supportive of networking. So let's try to look at uh, uh, each of these um, uh, issues uh, a bit more closely. Just one moment. Okay. All right. So intercultural uh, competence. Uh, interculturalist um, Gary Weaver in 1986 introduced the concept of surface and deep culture. And I'm sure you have all seen uh, this uh, iceberg uh, symbolic before. Uh, so there are visible elements of culture, uh, such as food, uh, literature, um, different types of games, music. Uh, but then a lot, of, a lot about the culture hides be, uh, beneath the surface, um, such as uh, the different communication styles, uh, notions of leadership, 
of um, a democracy, of friendship, approaches to marriage, uh, concepts of fairness, uh, attitudes uh, towards different things, uh, towards elders, towards work. All this uh, differs, of course, uh, uh, across cultures. And this, if, when two cultures that don't know each other meet, uh, this results in, uh, to some extent, stereotypes, oversimplified ideas of, uh, of different uh, groups, in unconscious bias, um, unsupported positive and negative uh, judgments of the other culture. Um, and essentially, in microaggressions, these are brief and commonplace daily verbal or behavioral indignities, whether intentional or unintentional, um, that uh, uh, essentially uh, create this friction between uh, the two different uh, countries or, or cultures in general. So let's try to um, hear from one of uh, the students uh, uh, in the United States, but this can be uh, uh, happening essentially anywhere, um, about uh, her experience uh, as an international student. Just one moment. I will try to wait for one more second. If we have a technical issue then I will move on. Hello, Lia. Hello. Is your uh, presentation ended? No, I'm still sharing. OK, great. You can continue that. Thank you very much, Lia. Yeah, yeah, it's not ended. I'm just, I wanted to share. technical issues. Um, so uh, not to um, then waste more time on this, uh, I wanted to show you a video of a Chinese student um, uh, essentially uh, adapting uh, to her uh, life uh, at an American university. And she is essentially explaining uh, the issues that she went through in her first uh, year, not understanding some of uh, the cultural uh, tendencies of Americans and some of the questions that they were asking her, uh, explaining that she felt more comfortable around the Chinese, uh, other Chinese students. No? Uh, so uh, this explains essentially uh, what I was mentioning earlier, that uh, at, at one end, uh, we have these two different cultures coming together. But then again, uh, another issue is that the students, <clears throat> uh, everybody tends to uh, hang out with others who are similar like them. Uh, and in other words, birds of a feather flock together. We always need to be aware of this. So people are attracted to those with similar uh, values, personality, activity preferences, physical attributes, uh, uh, and, and other, yeah? So people who are similar in socioeconomic status, religious beliefs, social habits, even bad habits tend to come together more often than uh, uh, if, and become close friends than uh, if this wouldn't be the case. <clears throat> so we need to keep this in mind as we're trying to build our global uh, network. Of course, why? Because uh, we also need complementary attributes. Yeah. So we hang out with people that have similar habits to us because it makes us feel comfortable. But in order to succeed, we need to hang out with people who are different from us as well. Now, um, and uh, this this is where the social capital theory come, comes in, saying that essentially uh, we are more successful uh, 
um, the more we build important connections uh, with strong ties with very close friends. Uh, weak ties are as well important and they lead to certain connections to certain resources and uh, that we uh, and otherwise don't have as individuals. And we also need to be aware of the absent ties. So where should we building um, uh, more friendships in order to have access to uh, resources? Yeah. Um, so why is it so difficult? We know another reason is, well, we have networking fears. Um, how, how do I start a conversation with someone new? Uh, what if I reach out to someone uh, and then I get rejected? How do I keep in touch afterwards? Who should I be reaching out to in the first place? Like I mentioned, uh, very often, as young students, even adults, we don't know how to approach networking strategically. Yeah. Um, so we think, um, question one, how do I start the conversation with someone new? Um, well, um, one of um, the uh, LinkedIn recommendations is, well, ask for information. People want to be asked something. They, they uh, uh, essentially like to give advice and feel valued. When you ask information for somebody, you make them feel valued. <clears throat> you should pay a compliment. That's another thing that people like, yeah? So uh, it, it is an easy way to start a conversation with uh, someone new. You can mention a shared experience. Remember, we are attracted to people who are similar to us. Um, and the questions need to be open-ended so that you're essentially making the other person uh, talk more and uh, have to respond in such a way uh, uh, that the conversation flows and cannot end at yes or no. Well, what if I reach out to someone, but then I get rejected? Yes, that's uh, also a fear that we all have and probably one of the, mo the most important fears to the of uh, public speaking. Well, Again, advice from experts is, well, what can the worst case scenario be? Um, it can happen that uh, you are rejected when you call somebody for coffee. Maybe people are busy. Uh, essentially, the worst case scenario is you, that you got rejected this time. You can approach a different person or you can ask this person next time when they're not so busy. Yeah, and uh, then there, uh, there is an advice uh, to essentially start practicing this skill uh, with people who are at the same level with you, who may uh, be in your weak network, so to say. So first you may approach someone who's on your team and isn't a friend. After that, you go to the next step, or maybe now you try to um, uh, essentially approach somebody who was in the same meeting with you. <clears throat> Uh, or who is in the same class with you, but normally you have never had a, a, a contact with them before. Uh, then you may approach either your boss, if you have a boss, you're a student, you may want to approach your teacher, your lecturer, um, and uh, try to see how the relationship can develop uh, from there. So uh, you can go through these different stages uh, to practice uh, your networking skill. Okay, well, how do I keep in touch afterwards? We have had coffee, uh, lunch together. So what happens next? <clears throat> um, it is very important <clears throat> to, come, to come back to your network regularly. And after this first contact, within the, thir the first 30 days, you should come back by offering something that's of value to this person that you have uh, uh, had a conversation with before. So it's important to think about what it is that you can give to this person. Remember, networking is about mutual benefits. <clears throat> um, 
can you offer a useful piece of information? Did you read an article um, that may be uh, uh, useful to this person? Or do you know somebody who can uh, um, um, help them? For example, they're starting a, uh, a new business. Uh, do you know somebody with uh, the type of knowledge that they need to start this business? Um, you can, of course, offer a follow-up uh, meeting now. Um, it is very important to keep building the relationship at the personal level. Uh, networking is not only, like we said, about exchanging information. It is about building trust and building long-term relationship. And for this, you need to know people at a personal level. And we don't like to do this, but essentially, uh, networking, the approach to networking needs to include the follow-up system. You have to uh, approach this strategically. Yeah, so so you have to have a list of people that you think you um, need to meet in order to build your global career, and uh, uh, and have a diary uh, on how the com how the conversions unfolded uh, uh, and when you last time followed up with them, so that uh, you can plan for regular uh, contact with these people. Who and how should I be reaching out in the first place? Um, well, um, it is very important to first understand what your personal career goals are. What are your interests? Also, you need to think about what is it that you can offer to, to your network? What kind of knowledge do you have? What kind of skills? <clears throat> uh, and then again, what kind of network you need to reach your particular uh, career goal? If you need the group of relationship with for this purpose. Uh, um, you need to understand this. Um, think about your values, think about your personality, think about the knowledge, maybe financial resources even, and think about the resources that you lack. Yeah. Uh, and then outline gaps in your social capital. Yeah. So what absent ties are there? Uh, which uh, uh, are your weak? ties, which are your uh, strong ties. And to do that, it's best to draw a social capital map. Uh, so um, in this map, similar to what I'm showing you on the screen now, you need to think, where are you? Um, what is it that you can offer? What is it that you're lacking? Who are your weak ties, strong ties? Where are the absent ties? Um, Think about the group of people, your friends, uh, co-workers from internship, your teachers, um, and think about where can you meet those people that you still need in your network and don't have access to, or who can introduce you to them from your existing network. Okay. So when you're at the host university, it is very, very important to reach out actively, to come over these networking fears and um, uh, uh, similarity affiliation bias uh, and your cultural iceberg uh, to connect to people, uh, yes, other international students, uh, but also the local community. Yeah. And you can do this through extracurricular activities on campus, different off-campus opportunities, um, traveling with other students. Don't forget, it, network is about building close connections. And there is no uh, uh, more beautiful way to build close um, uh, friendship and ties than through traveling. Local housing. So uh, living in places where local students live also very important. Uh, and don't forget this second level 
uh, yeah, so not approaching only your friends, your age base, but also older people who are in, in more advanced positions than you that can bring in resources later on that you may need. Next slide is coming, one moment. <laughs> My screen froze just one second. Okay. Um, so like I have mentioned, um, in order to create your global network while you're study, studying overseas, you also need to pay attention to whether your host institution is providing the supportive structures. Um, is the institution in efficient and vision dedicated to diversity and inclusion? Courses issues um uh, inter training for faculty staff students um uh, are there ongoing interaction programs where international students and the local community can come together um is there counseling career counseling integration counseling available for you as an international uh, student so let me give you an example from venus university how we try to provided for our for our students um, so uh, first of all um, we have the essentially uh, developed from a small family uh, business which uh, brought um, the first modern computer science education to Indonesia over 40 years ago so um, the vision of the university is uh, to connect with the international community, to foster and empower the society, to build the nation, and as well contribute uh, um, uh, to the international community by empowering Indonesia. <clears throat> so it is very important uh, for us to have uh, international students on campus, to have international activities, so that our uh, students can develop the global mindset that they need for the international careers uh, today. Um, that's why we have a very strong exchange uh, program with over 900 and over 700 visiting international students uh, joining us every year. Uh, we have uh, as well, uh, a growing number of international lecturers, while at the same time our Indonesian lecturers have either studied overseas and they all have at least five years of industry experience so they can connect you again um, to those important contacts for your future careers. Over 1,500 international collaboration activities from seminars to all sorts of other uh, different uh, uh, possibilities in, in inter and so on, which contributes to 90% of our students having some kind of international experience before they graduate. Yeah, so we measure this. We uh, each of our students needs to have either studied abroad or uh, had to have uh, an internship in a global company or some other kind of international experience in order to for us to prepare them uh, for the global. Uh, careers and our programs are focusing on computing on business design uh, communications all of these are very relevant programs uh, today internationally um, and we offer this program uh, in partnership with over 240 study overseas uh, partners so that the students get the perspective not only um, uh, through the lens of Indonesia and Southeast Asia or ASEAN, but uh, also uh, through case studies from other parts of the world. <laughs> so we run double degrees, uh, four plus zero uh, programs, uh, three plus one options as well. But in four plus zero options, students stay four years in Indonesia, but they get two degrees from Venus University as 
top one private university in Indonesia and another uh, prominent university, usually in the US, uh, in UK, Australia, uh, U uh, and Europe. So for instance, with the University of Newcastle in Australia, we run a four plus zero program uh, for uh, business majors. Um, both of the schools are uh, ASCSB accredited. They're uh, uh, so internationally highly um, uh, reputable and valued. Um, and not only through this program, you get uh, a network, a Binusia network. You also get to know people from the University of Newcastle. And this program is facilitated um, through goal business education. So we, on top of that, offer a mentoring program which focus on things such as entrepreneurship, uh, networking, uh, and similar. We also run a similar program uh, for design uh, with Northumbria University in UK. <clears throat> Apart from that, um, out of the four years that our students spend um, uh, studying at the undergraduate program, three years they are in the classroom. One year they have to either study overseas, do community development, um, conduct uh, an extensive research project uh, uh, outside of their um, uh, 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 final research uh, thesis. They can be a part of our incubator or they can have an internship. Yeah, so 95% of our students are employed following graduation because of this approach. And I have mentioned location is important as well. We are in Jakarta, uh, which is a center uh, of uh, uh, um, digital economy in Southeast uh, Asia. It is also a very multicultural uh, uh, city and uh, many, uh, global businesses have their offices here. So you have access to very important uh, opportunities uh, living in Jakarta. I started with our uh, mission, um, our Binusian values, very important um, as well. So we are trying to build students that strive for excellence, uh, that persevere, that have high integrity, respect, for different backgrounds that innovate, that work well together. You have to be able to respect diversity and uh, to be able uh, and be able to work in teams um, uh, to build your global career. Yeah. So for instance, uh, um, at least one assignment within each of our courses is usually going to be a group project. Yeah. So you definitely learn how to uh, uh, work in groups when you're at Venus. Um, okay. Um, apart from that, uh, we offer counseling, psychological, academic career counseling to our students. Uh, we mentor uh, students. We have a very lively iBuddy program. Uh, meaning local students, uh, helping new international students adjust to their life in Indonesia during their uh, first uh, year. We have peer tutoring. I have already mentioned uh, goal business education mentoring for um, our business students uh, on the 4 plus 0 program with the University of Newcastle. We have a dedicated international student engagement counselor who understands uh, uh, what international students need um, and uh, engages in continuous discussion with international students to understand, okay, what are your problems, including what are your uh, adjustment issues and uh, networking issues within um, Binusian uh, and in Indonesia. Now, um, our international office continuously builds programs um, where international students can uh, demonstrate um, their cultural background and knowledge and share this with the local community. So the programs of continuous interaction uh, are in place. We have different student clubs. Uh, our Binu Square Hall of Residence, like I uh, probably mentioned already, hosts both international uh, and local students as another um, possibility to interact. 
Uh, and finally, we also offer a very um, generous uh, scholarship covering full tuition and accommodation uh, for international uh, students so that we open doors uh, as well to students who may be in financial need um, uh, uh, to get access to Benusian community and essentially to the um, to their desired international career that they may not otherwise have access to. Yeah, uh, so I was in a similar uh, position uh, like this. I will uh, finish my presentation just talking briefly about uh, myself as an example. I am a first generation college graduate. I studied primarily with scholarships um, uh, as an international student from uh, India to uh, US and then Germany. And uh, today um, I represent uh, uh, Binus uh, University. I'm an international communication and student journey professional. I uh, uh, am a capacity building, branding and marketing specialist and a proponent of diversity, equity and inclusion. And not surprisingly, <laughs> you can probably imagine uh, um, uh, I also live in my uh, family uh, circle um, uh, in the international community. Um, so how did all this essentially come about uh, now? So when I was growing up, I, it somehow ended up uh, being outgoing, always dedicated to high quality output, upholding strong values. And then with time I developed, because I was uh, um, offered the scholarship in uh, India, knowledge of English, knowledge of international ed education, um, intercultural communication. Uh, and this opened up different opportunities. Uh, because I was very outgoing and uh, good in academics and well connected among other uh, students and close to uh, teachers, I was um, recommended uh, for a UWC uh, United World College scholarship. <clears throat> now, um, then at another point in my life, always being in some kind of financial trouble, when I wanted to do my master's degree, I didn't get a full scholarship, but I was able to borrow um, some funds from friends from college and uh, high school to do that, which was possible because they trusted um, who I was from knowing, uh, from the years of knowing each other before. Uh, then thanks to uh, my Indonesian husband, when I came to Indonesia uh, and his network, I was able to land a dream job in Indonesia. And uh, then I was also quickly noticed and got a, a promotion at Binus University to my current position. Uh, so what I want to emphasize before I close is that you, in order to have an international career, you need to have clear goals. You need to understand all these issues um, that uh, play out as we're trying to um, develop the network, uh, but very important is to essentially build your own brand and build your own knowledge on the way that you can contribute to this uh, network. Yeah, so how do you build your international um, uh, career? It's very important to network globally. Don't forget to build the knowledge uh, to remember who, uh, what your values are uh, and uh, stay true to those values. Um, and then think as well about how your study overseas option, um, university and location uh, contribute to your international career uh, goals. Yeah. Um, just uh, before uh, we move to Q&A session, so if you want to connect uh, with Venus, uh, these are some of our social media handles. And then I strongly recommend Hive Indo, our online magazine, uh, where you can hear more about uh, Venusian community from uh, our, our students and our staff. And this is my uh, contact uh, details. You can uh, scan the QR code 
or go to the bit.ly link to, uh, to request more information about us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.